Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Phillips and thank you for tuning in to this week's webisode. Every week I bring in a different business to hopefully share some good tips and advice within their industry. And today I have Danny Reynolds. And Danny, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jeff. Yep. Why don't you explain to the viewers a little bit about yourself and what you do? All right. Uh, my name is Danny Reynolds. I am the commercial account manager at First Security Service Incorporated. We're right here in Durham. Uh, we serve the entire Triangle area. Been in business for 25 years now, Jeff. Wow, that's a long time. So yeah. within that time, I'm sure you've seen some trends and what, what works and what doesn't work. Why don't you share some uh, safety tip that um, you feel is vital for a family? Yeah, one of the first things when I'm talking to a family and about a home uh, would be uh, fire smoke detectors or smoke detectors in a home. A lot of people or some people think that they are just working when you know, smoke is detected. But actually, Jeff, they're working 24 hours a day monitoring the air quality in your home. You know, it's just like any electrical appliance, though. You know, they're going to wear out. And the components of a smoke detector will wear out over a period of years. So if you have a smoke detector that is 10 years old or older, then it's going to be a whole lot less likely that it's going to actually work correctly. So please consider changing them out. Okay, good advice, good advice. So following up on this issue, what uh, do you think a, a family should um, focus on? Well, the thing that I always talk to them about is develop and practice a family fire escape plan. Almost no one does it, but I can tell you a fire can turn into a life threatening situation in just a very few minutes because of the smoke and the carbon monoxide that comes off of a smoldering fire and the smoke in a home. So I always tell families, I said, get together with everybody in the family, walk from room to room, try to develop at least two escape routes from each room, making sure that everybody knows how to unlock all windows and doors, and then try to practice it about every six months. What you need to do is actually go through the process, pick out a point, a safety point, that everybody in the family is going to meet outside. And please never go back into a burning structure once you have got out safely. Let the professionals do that. Okay. Well, in my case, I mean, you, I think practicing is good, but in my case, I have a five-year-old daughter. I mean, I'm not going to teach her uh, you know, I'm not going to practice going out the window, right? Right, right. So what, right. Do, what do you suggest? We tell families to develop a plan that fits their specific needs. Let's just take, for instance, that there is a teenager in a house, and then there is an eight-year-old and a three-year-old, okay? What you would probably want to do is have the teenager be part of the plan of find your eight-year-old sibling, y'all exit out, an area and then the mom or the dad is going to get the young child they all practice go out and then they stay out they don't go back in you just have to develop a plan and practice it so everybody knows exactly what to do when that moment hunt comes okay good all right well let's switch gears a little bit here and let's talk about businesses yeah. um what what's a, a tip or some uh, I guess a safety tip you could give a business? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, of course, yeah. A great security system would be a good deterrent. But things that a small business or any business can do is first look at putting dead bolts on all the exterior doors. That's a very easy fix that you can go to any hardware store, get that, or either have a locksmith install them on there. Second thing that I always tell people is make sure that you have good inside, but more so outside lighting, because light deters theft, you know? So people don't want to be seen if they're approaching, you know, a building or a home. If it's light outside, they're going to be a whole lot more apprehensive about approaching it. Okay. What are your thoughts on um, motion-activated uh, lights? Well, that is a personal preference, Jeff. Uh, I have had both. You know, I've had motion-activated lights that I had installed versus dust-to-dawn lights that I installed. The reason that I preferred the dust-to-dawn was typically I had a lot of deer in the area that I lived. And every night, or if not every night, at least several times a week, 3 o'clock in the morning, I have heard, you know, six or eight deer in the back of my yard, turns it on, turns it off, turns it on. Bothers me because I'm a light sleeper. But, you know, the dust of dawn gives enough illuminated light that if anybody was approaching my home, they're going to think twice about it and it's going to deter us theft. But, 
you know, a lot of my uh, friends and uh, uh, that I've known love the the motion activated because it's only on for just a short period of time, thus saving a little bit more money. It, it goes right back to being a personal choice, but some kind of light outside, I would say it's going to be a good deterrent. Okay, good, good information. I appreciate that. And for any of you that uh, are interested in finding out more about Danny's company and maybe how he can help protect you, your family, or your business, uh, I uh, watch for the w website at the end of this video. Now, if you found this video to be valuable and it's the first time here hanging out with us, I'd love to have you to subs subscribe at infocusstudios.com or here at our Infocus Studios YouTube channel. And feel free to leave any comments below this video that you choose. And until next time, take care.